What happens when you don't water your plants for seven weeks? Lockdown happened, I went home, plants were left in office. Now I am equipped and dealing with them to bringing them back to life. I am determined to resurrect my office plants and I welcome you to come along. I hope it helps you too. Let's do it. In the first episode, we talked about how to triage and today it's time to do the first aid. For the first aid, we need to remember five things. Clean, prepare, water, feed and place. Let's look at this point by point. So we have this variegated rubber plant and we have to start by cleaning it properly. I'll clean all the leaves, I'll clean the bottom here and then we'll move to point two. So that's it, we have trimmed almost each and every branch. Crunchy. So I have cleaned the bottom and we have checked that the leaves are uh, attached firmly so they are not going, we are not going to struggle with them. In preparing, there are a couple of steps we need to do. Trimming is very important. Every plant you have to trim. Uh, that's how you signal the plant to activate growing. So for this one, I'm going to trim from the ends. This plant is known as devil pattern. When I have options, I'm trying to leave the branches with leaves so that plant has some help. But this one being too long, I'm going to cut this back. So this is a bougainvillea. It's totally dry. I don't know whether it's alive or not, but I'll try to revive it. Bougainvillea is a very hardy plant otherwise. It is very drought resistant and it can go for long durations without water. So. I hope it is fine. Oh, this is alive. And there's a green ring. There's a gap here. Uh, we need to fill that with soil. Now in normal situation with so many roots, I would have repotted the plant, but right now because the plant seems to have a great chance of survival, I'm not going to repot and give it more stress. But yes, these roots make it seem like the plant is ready for repotting. I have loosened the soil, now I'm going to put some water. This brings us to point number three. I'm adding some green sticks to feed the plant and at this stage you want to add only green sticks uh, don't use bloom sticks at this stage
one of the important things is where to place it. If your plant is outdoors where it loves a uh, harsh sun, place it in a bit of shade. And if your plant likes low light, go ahead and place it in brighter shade. The idea is this is the time when we want to provide it enough light but at the same time we want to protect it from heat and reduce water evaporation. So let's see where we can put. We can place this plant next to a south facing window where it will get good light. At the same time if the sun becomes harsh I roll down the blinds and it gets filtered light. But let me show you if you have to place it outdoors, where can you place it? Let's go. If you have an open balcony like this, which gets light from every direction, a great place to keep a pot is in a shadow of something else. So like this wall, would, if I put it right next to this wall here, the shadow from the wall will keep it away from direct sun, but at the same time, it will still experience a very bright outdoors. If you don't have a wall like this, maybe you have some cabinets or something next to which you can keep it. Otherwise, you can keep these small plants under big plants. And this is how you can give it enough light but still protect it from heat.